Hey, what's up guys? It's Zach from Exploring Tech and disclaimer, this video might not be that interesting to a lot of you guys out there, but on the contrary, it's going to be super informative and super helpful to a very small group of YouTubers like me. So just let you know. this mic it's a BM 800 it's a condenser microphone from Amazon uh, at a price about uh, around thousand rupees the price ranges from a thousand to thousand five hundred and it's from a generic brand there are other branded stuff as we call them uh, but basically I think it's a rebranding stuff going on with these things so I just went the generic one just because it's a cheap one now coming to the build quality, uh, for the price it's actually pretty solid because it's all metal all round, no plastic used in the mic and it is pretty sturdy for the most part. Now why do I say for the most part because there is one thing, this golden ring that you see, it just wiggles around, it is not attached to the frame which is weird, uh, I don't get the purpose of it but it's just there and if you shake it, it's gonna make some noise which is not a huge fact but that's about the build. Now the thing that people are here for the sound quality how is the audio how is the recording i'll get to that in a bit but here is the catch with this so as you'd expect take them out of the box connect it to your pc or phone whatever through the 3.5 millimeter jack hit record button on your software and start recording but turns out 98 percent of the time basically i'm just making the percentage out but uh, mostly Turns out that it doesn't work out of the box. So now what? What's the next solution? What's the cheap solution to do? And predominantly on YouTube or maybe on the internet, I don't know, but predominantly on YouTube, uh, the solution, the cheapest solution to make it work in a decent manner is a USB sound card. That works and also does not work in a way. So let me explain that. Uh, the concept behind this is basically very simple. A 3.5 millimeter jack does not provide that much power to the mic, especially if it's a condenser mic. So it needs a 45, a 48 volts, or as we call phantom power to make it work at its best. Mind you, at its best. So therefore, a 3.5 millimeter jack does not provide that much of power, whereas a USB sound card through the USB port provides five volts uh, which is kind of enough uh, for the mic to work and provide some decent performance. I bought three sound cards, uh, one from a retail shop which cost me around 120 rupees and the other two were worth 700 rupees and both of them were from Amazon. I'll give all the links below if you want to check them out but I do not recommend buying that so hear me out. With uh, the first 700 rupees card uh, I put in the jack and it does not work right out of the box. I don't think that was a defective option, but uh, all kind of uh, 3.5 millimeter jack does not support each other, so there was that compatibility error, I think. Therein comes or kicks in the first inconsistency of these USB sound cards. So you'd never know if it's gonna work or not. It's just a trial method, hit and trial error method, whatever it's called. The second 700 rupees card that I bought uh, came in and I connected it, it did work, but I had to keep the mic as literally even closer than there was not even a one inch gap between my mouth and the mic. And on that situation, I had to put my gain to 100%. And only then could I get some pretty good quality audio. If I would keep it like a feet away, it would just sound terrible if I would amplify it uh, to about 0 dB or minus 3 dB around that level the audio would just become unusable, which definitely means that the USB does take in or supply five volts of power, but it is actually made of some cheap conductors and condensers so that only half of the voltage is making through the mic. There is a video that I'll link below which explains what I'm talking about in detail. So if you wanna check that out, 
in the description so you can check it out now coming to the so that 700 rupees card goes away back to amazon again because that is really unusable for me because i do uh, for arrows i have to keep the mic really close to my mouth and i do not have stands or stuff like that it, it's just a hassle for me to keep the mic close to my mouth so i i that was not worth the 700 rupees actually it would work but that was not worth that 700 rupees uh, for its performance now coming to the 150 uh, rupees card uh, bought from a local retail shop uh, that worked perfectly fine that did provide some decent amount of power to make it work even when kept at a distance from my mouth but the issue with that is some grounding uh, ground loop noise problem whatever it's called i searched the internet and there was apparently some fixes but it did not work with mine but i've seen people use this same usb sound card uh, on youtube and it has worked perfectly fine for them uh, i don't know what the matter is so as far as i think i'll show you an example of how bad it sounds with that so this is the direct recording from the usb card that i bought from a retail shop and you can hear that his noise that is coming through it so this is without processing now this is what you can hear and it is now uh, after done after noise reduction from audacity so you can get an idea but still there is the little bit of noise if you can hear it very specifically then yeah for me uh, i don't think it's it's usable so turns out the quality or the maintenance quality control of these usb sound cards over the board across the board is very inconsistent and you can go wrong anytime so does that mean uh, condenser mics are just basically useless absolutely not they are one of the best sounding mics out there uh, but uh, here are my recommendations if you are uh, wanting to use a condenser mic there are a couple of ways you can go with the classic audio interface way or uh, by separate phantom power and stuff but it is just going to increase the price at one of the cheapest audio interfaces out there costs over 4000 rupees so that is definitely uh, not in does not fit in the budget and whereas a phantom power also costs around 2000 rupees so definitely these things are out of budget and there is a fidelity issues with these things you have to connect the mic to your audio interface and then again connect the audio interface to your pcs and stuff so it's a lot of hassle for uh, the price to pay and also we are looking for budget so herein comes the other kind of mics and why the boya m1 is predominantly one of the most recommended mics for youtube or starting as your first mic uh, it works absolutely fine no extra power is needed for that but there are other uh, one of the things that i did not go with that is because the frequency range that it captures is really teeny and i do not like the output of that mic so i did not go with that but there are other options dynamic mic being one of the very versatile ones i was not aware of this mic before I bought this so that was a fail for me but here I am definitely give a shot to dynamic mic because they are do not require any kind of power uh, to work at its optimal performance and it also costs uh, around 1600 rupees and you can get from it from a branded company like Audio Technica which is pretty well known so it just works uh, via a 3.5 millimeter jack and no external extra power is needed to make it work there are other mics like shotgun mics there is one from boya mm1 which uh, costs around 2000 rupees and also that um, is pretty easy to use but uh, i don't know i have not used it so you might give it a shot and then definitely there are the zoom h1 which is one of the pristine mics out there if you want to capture audio on a budget but that also does not fit our budget it's like over 4000 rupees so whatever um, the situation you are in, before buying uh, your first audio gear, definitely make some solid research on YouTube, man. There are tons and tons of videos. Here is my own experience and definitely make a good research. Buying a camera, buying light and stuff is pretty easy, I think, uh, when put against buying your first mic, especially when you are on budget. 
So why did not I use the mic? Definitely I could have used that mic, but for that price that I was paying for a USB card, it was definitely not worth it. And I did not go any further researching for sound cards because it is very inconsistent that I have observed for the past couple of months. And it's just very inconvenient to use. So that mic sits in my shelf for maybe when I get a Zoom H1 or an audio interface dedicated for condenser mics. But the quality that you can get from a condenser mic if you can make it work is really gonna be some pristine quality at a budget. So better luck for you if you are lucky enough to get your condenser mic to work on a budget, then good luck. So that's been my vision about a condenser mic. I prefer using a phone like this, holding it in my hand. Uh, I just buy a stand and keep it close to my mouth so that I can use both my hands. And that's it for now regarding the audio. Let me know what the audio sounds like in the comments below. Because I think it's pretty uh, solid for what I'm doing. And it, it would work for me for another couple of years unless I upgrade. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you use your phone or a dedicated mic and if a mic and if it's not a Boya M1 mic, Lavalier mic, then let us know in the comments below. So that wraps it up about the mic. Keep exploring. Catch you in the next one. You never, you never know what's around the